So today we're going to start talking about this process called stoichiometry. And uh, we're going to define what stoichiometry is, and then we're going to take a look at some of the basic types of problems that we can do with stoichiometry, which are called mole-to-mole -mole calculations. And we'll talk more about what that means in just a few minutes. So this is just an example to give you an idea of what stoichiometry really is at its base. And if you have a recipe like this and you're trying to make cookies, you have a list of all the things that you need, those are the ingredients. You have a procedure that you're going to follow to turn those ingredients into a product. And then, over here, you have a predicted outcome. So according to the recipe, if you use exactly these quantities of ingredients and you follow exactly this procedure, you should get four dozen cookies. Stoichiometry is essentially the same concept using chemical reactions. Given a certain amount of starting material, the reactants, given a balanced chemical equation, which is the process, you can predict exactly how much product you should get. And that's true of any of the reactants. It's also true to work backwards to say if you want a desired amount of product, how much reactant will you need? Just like if you wanted, say, six dozen cookies instead of four, you could work backwards to predict, for example, how much flour you would need in order to make six dozen instead of four dozen. We can do that with chemical reactions too. The other concept that we're going to uh, talk about a little bit and we'll do more later is, for example, if you run out of butter in this uh, recipe, then you're, you can't make any more cookies because that ingredient is gone, therefore the process can't continue. Chemical reactions work the same way. You have multiple reactants and if any one of those reactants is missing, you cannot continue the reaction. So again, we'll talk more about that later, uh, but just to get the idea. So here's the definition of stoichiometry. We're talking about the quantitative relationship, so that means numerical, mathematical, calculating, between the amount of reactants you use and the amount of reactants that can be formed in a chemical reaction. So again, we can look at that either way. Given the reactants, we can predict the amount of product that will be formed, or given the amount of product desired, we can calculate how much reactant we would need to make that happen. Um, or we can compare uh, two reactants. If you know how much of one reactant you have, you can predict how much of the other reactant is needed to use all that first reactant up. Or if you know how much of one product is formed, you can predict how much of the other products would have to be formed at the same time. All of these relationships uh, go hand in hand. We can do stoichiometry because of the law of conservation of mass, which says that the amount of material that you start with is exactly the same as the amount of material that you end up with. It's the same atoms that have just been rearranged and combined in different ways. So because of that, we know that whatever you start with is what you end up with, and we can use that to perform calculations. And this last point is what I was talking about before with the example of the butter and the cookies. A chemical reaction will continue until any one of the reactants is gone. As soon as one of the reactants is used up, that reaction is over. So the balanced equation is like the recipe, the procedure for the recipe in the example of the cookies. It tells us, given so many moles of one ingredient and so many moles of another ingredient, a reaction will produce a given amount of product. And we read this equation in terms of both the substances like C3H8 or propane, and the quantities, which are the coefficients, represent the number of moles. Really, they could represent anything, but we, we usually talk about them in terms of moles. It's all a proportion. So one mole, there's a, a implied one here, one mole of propane reacts with five moles of oxygen to produce three moles of CO2 and four moles of water. Okay, so all those are different ratios or different quantities that we need in order for this reaction to work. So looking at this equation, what if we wanted twice as much CO2? Right, so if we use uh, two moles instead of one, well, the ratios are one, five, three, and four, which means if I put this at a two, I have to also, by proportion, double everything else. Okay, so it means that if I burn two moles of propane, I would get six moles of CO2. I'd also get eight moles of water. Okay, so these proportions hold true no matter what the quantities are. 
and we can use that to create what's called the mole ratio. And the mole ratio is the centerpiece of all these stoichiometric calculations. So we can have a ratio between any two things in these equations. Starting with the propane, right, there's a ratio of propane to oxygen of 1 to 5. There's a ratio of propane to carbon dioxide of 1 to 3. Right, connect those two, connect those two, and then we can connect the propane to the water, which would be 1 to 4. And I can do that with all the other substances. There's lots and lots of combinations. Typically, we only need one, uh, but you need to be aware that it could be a ratio of any two things in the equation. What's the ratio between propane and CO2? Well, just look at the numbers. Right, The number in front of propane is 1. The number of uh, in front of CO2 is 3, so the ratio is either 1 to 3 or 3 to 1, depending on how you want to look at it, and either one might be used. So here's how we're going to set up these problems. We're going to start with the moles of the substance that we know, which means the one that the problem gives you. That's where we start here. Then we're going to use one of those mole ratios that we were just talking about. The top value, the numerator, is the coefficient of the substance we're trying to find, the one that the question is asking you for, goes on the top. And then the coefficient of the given substance, which is whatever we started the problem with, the coefficient of the known substance goes on the bottom. We multiply the moles of known times the mole ratio, and that gives us the moles of unknown. So let's take an example. If we want to know... Here's the question. Question is, how many moles of O2? So this is our unknown, O2. Would be needed to react with 3 moles of C3H8. This is our known, because we're given, we know that we have 3 moles of C3H8. So now let's take a look at that. We know 3 moles, and we don't know how many moles of oxygen. So moles of known was 3. The coefficient of the unknown, the unknown is oxygen, the coefficient of oxygen is 5. The coefficient of the known, the known is the propane, which has a coefficient of 1. So we multiply 3 times 5 over 1, and we see that it would be 15 moles of oxygen that would be needed to react with 3 moles of propane. And you might have been able to do that in your head, right? If you just triple everything, that works out. But you're not usually going to have these nice round numbers, so you need to know how to set up the problem no matter what the values are that you're starting with. Okay, so here's another problem. Different equation. How many moles of oxygen would be needed to, to produce 10 moles of aluminum oxide? Okay, so we're given 10 moles of aluminum oxide, so this is what we know. That's what we want. And the question, again, is how many O2? So that's our unknown. So given 10 moles, right, we said 10 moles of product, how many moles of oxygen would we need? Well, the coefficient of the unknown, 3. These numbers, the mole ratio, always, always, always come from the chemical equation, never from the question. The coefficient of the known, well, the known is the uh, product that we were asked to find, or uh, that we were given, rather, which has a coefficient of 2. So 10 times 3 over 2 means it would take 15 moles of um, 15 moles of oxygen to produce 10 moles. And again, if you line this up, 10, well, that's 2 times 5, 3 times 5 is 15, so that makes sense. But it, it works to set up the equation. That way you know um, what you're working with. How many moles of H2 would be produced by the reaction of 12 moles of iron? So H2 is our unknown, that's the question, would be produced by 12 moles of iron. So that's what we're given. Given 12 moles of iron, how many moles of H2? The unknown is H2, has a coefficient of 4 up here. The known is the iron, which has a coefficient of 3. So we've got 12 times 4 over 3. which is 16 moles. Okay, so
the coefficients in the mole ratio or the numbers in the mole ratio come from the balanced equation. The known is whatever the question gives you to work with. The unknown is whatever the question is asking you to find. And then you set up the ratio, multiply by the moles given, and you get the moles of unknown. And that's a mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry calculation.